All right, President Obama today announced plans to open up more of America's coastal waters to oil companies, a move he says is needed to sustain economic growth and produce jobs. Welcome news, of course, to many energy investors. Right now, I am joined by Marvin Odom. Marvin is the president of Shell Oil, which has been working to increase production by 11 percent uh, by 2012. Marvin, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us uh, at such short notice. Let me ask you, will this help you get closer to that goal? No, this is a very important step for this country. I think the, you know, the strong signal that we're getting now from the administration that there are core areas of offshore to be open for exploration and production, extremely important for the country in terms of getting more energy, more energy produced at home, and you get all the jobs and the other benefits associated with that. What about uh, the closing of the, of the uh, work in Alaska? I mean, is that going to cause a problem uh, for oil explorers or oil, oil refiners in, in the short term? Do they cut off supply there and have to build it up places where it's going to take a lot of lead time? No, I think there's an, there's an important aspect to this announcement because what, what the administration has done is they have signaled that the leases that exist offshore Alaska today, and that they're very substantial, we as a company own quite a few of those leases, that those will move ahead into the exploration phase. And so, you know, we're actually ready to start drilling offshore Alaska, first time in probably 25 years anyone's done so, in, uh, in the summer of 2010. So the sooner we get that started, we can demonstrate that we can do that in a way that protects the environment, get that oil into the Trans-Alaska pipeline. So that's actually a positive part of the announcement. I think the other aspect of Alaska was more areas will be considered to be open after we see how this part goes. And here we're showing a map of the new oil and gas exploration areas. You see there uh, on your screen the eastern gulf and then the eastern seaboard area. And, and you say for, for now, at least in the short term, the eastern gulf area is a little bit more important. It is. It's more important, I think, in the eastern gulf of Mexico because it's more near term. And, I, and that's important to everybody in this equation of how do you create jobs and get more energy here in the country. So the, we, there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure that already exists in the Gulf of Mexico. Moving east is a natural progression. We have been doing that in recent lease sales, have made some big exploration discoveries over there. So that's the production that could come on in the, in the shortest period of time. But of course, one of the greatest things for the, for the president, for the country, is that uh, when he allows you guys to drill in places where you haven't got the infrastructure in place, you've got to hire people to put it there, you've got to hire people to do the drilling, you've got to pay a lot of companies to help you along with this. Uh, is that, do you think, going to be a boon to jobs, uh, building that infrastructure on the eastern seaboard? Well, there's no question in my mind that when you open these areas to exploration and production, a lot of jobs come with that. So just think about the oil and gas business in the United States, direct and indirect jobs, over 9 million. So, I mean, that's a tremendous number of jobs. And you get a direct correlation between opening new areas and creating more jobs. And what's the run-up time here? I mean, do you, do you add jobs over the next one to three years to work on this, three to five years? What, what are you looking at as far as a window? Yeah. Well, to a degree, it starts immediately. So if we're able to go start exploration offshore Alaska this year, then we'll start hiring immediately. We need people to do everything from, from work on the equipment all the way through to, uh, to handle our marine mammal monitoring programs, our envir environmental programs that we run while we do that. So the, the jobs ramp up actually starts to happen pretty quickly. When you get to the stage of going from exploration into a development project, for example, we have a project called Perdido coming on stream in the Gulf of Mexico today, 100,000 barrel equivalents a day, then you've got long-term permanent jobs. Uh, you know, it seems that it would make sense that this helps us reduce our reliance on foreign oil for our energy needs here in the U.S., but it doesn't help us really reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. I mean, how do we move more towards that goal, and, and, and why would Shell actually want to? I know you guys are, 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 are pushing also in this area of alternative energy, but what, what's the drive there? Yeah, it's a, it's a really important question, and part of it is realizing that as you change the energy mix over time, you think about the scale of the energy system and how long it takes to make that change. So oil and gas, and, and even the most rapid of changes, the, you know, the, the emergence of alternative energies and so forth, oil and gas will be the predominant energy, energy source for decades into the future. So it just gives you a sense of the time scale involved. Now, the reason why we get involved in some of those alternative energies is the world will go this way. We think, we think the energy consumption around the globe will double between now and 2050. So we're going to need all forms of energy, including oil and gas.
All right. Hey, Marvin, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Marvin Odom there, president of Shell Oil Company in Houston, talking about uh, the president's really historic uh, announcement today.